it has been a week already at Yale um training cohort 50 the golden cohort and my name is Adam Bakaita the Evelyn and I am privileged to be part of um Yale cohort 50 and since I reported um it has been a lot I feel like I know everything I'm in the business industry I'm growing I'm in the agriculture industry I'm growing but like being on Yale I realized that there's a difference of being a leader and there's a difference of growing a business. Also, to be a good leader in your business, you have to take emotion off. To be in a business operation, you have to take passion off. Passion made you start a business, but only passion will not keep you going. Identifying your weakness, how to coordinate your workers, coordinate management, and let everything work for money. Um, it's, it's, it's just been a weekend. Yale had made me realize that I was just doing mushroom production as a passion, something I'm fun with, and I wasn't actually tackling it as a business. Taking us to on site people who are also starting business out there. And we are learning a lot about the challenges they face, how they manage to set up, how they are keeping up, how they are growing. And I can just see myself there. Yale, we thank you. We thank you for this golden opportunity. Departments, the accounting departments, and the marketing departments function. Okay, so we have a resident engineer over here, Jim. Um, he's an agriculture engineer, and we have um, legacy and planning who works in the marketing department. And then we also have um, Wendy in the corner there, she's a sales consultant. Hi. Decided to ride bamboo bicycles from Ghana to Nigeria to raise funds for an orphanage in the central region. It's a malaria thing. So, along the Arago lands of West Africa, they realized that the whole Lots of land. Why is farming not happening as much as it should? So they began asking questions, um, you know, to those across the value chain, the farmers, the agriculturists. And the most prominent answer was that farmers don't have enough capital to actually farm. You know, production is a challenge. What happens is that they end up borrowing money from 50%. So when a farmer, you know, has his... When a farmer has his... Crops cultivated, 30% of it is going to waste. It's going to waste. Okay. So, please don't mind. I'll just continue from the slide. As we have a later in the Asuchari, we have Mr. Francis Money, um, General Manager, the CEO, Nana Usarachi, and meeting, and then we have Amabel, who had just given me, um, she's the head of the partnerships and points. So, like I was mentioning, $1.9 billion. Each year goes goes targets losses in Ghana, and that was um, just mentioned by the uh, World Food Program office in Ghana in June. This is a very you know recent number. Now, about seven million small order farmers are affected by this one point nine billion dollar number. Okay, and these seven million farmers produce seventy percent of the food they eat in the country. In developed countries and in other countries across Africa, it's a different, you know, uh, you know, it's a different story. What happens is that commercial farmers produce more of the food, but in Ghana, our smallholder farmers produce more of the food we eat. Okay, so, uh, so you have some of the crops that we do. We yeah, have AI, so rice, soybean, um, yellow maize, white maize. Yes. So what do we do? We created an innovative micro aggregator platform. Okay. And it works via USSD. Okay. So what happens is that... Okay. It's back on the Okay. Sorry. So what happens is that via USSD... That's um star eight zero zero star zero zero eight hash. You can have your commodities bought in real time if you're a farmer. And what happens is that we raise funds via five different means. So the crowdfunding platform is just one. 
banks, microfinance institutions, um, donor funding institutions, and then we have high network individuals. So um, that these five avenues give us the opportunity to have money, large sums of money placed on the platform where we've partnered with the Ghana Commodity Exchange that have warehouses across the country. We enable these warehouses to be quantity and quantity measuring instruments and the warehouse manager so that at any point in time, you can approach the warehouse and have your commodities bought in real time. Because the farmer's commodities are his bank account. I can imagine you going to the ATM, you know, to buy medicine or stilettos or you know, anything else, and the ETF tells you to yeah. hold on a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 that's how practically it feels when you ask a farmer to wait a little. So this technology allows a farmer to have his commodity purchase in real time, immediately, mm-hmm. after quantity and quality checks are now. So what happens is that money is placed on the platform and reflects on the platform as the amount of money that is stationed at a warehouse. So if it's Shibu, if it's current that is as you carry, you as a farmer know how much money is currently in the warehouse before you get there. I, I hope we are all together. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, this allows seamless um commodity trade through the value chain. Mm-hmm. The players are practically three. We have the farmer who's a producer. You have the aggregator who moves the commodities and you have the off team. Now the farmer's challenge is that he has created post harvest losses and he doesn't have enough finance to you know, actually produce. The aggregator's challenge is that he doesn't have the logistical um strength to move commodities. And then he's also has he also has a financing challenge. Like I mentioned, mm-hmm. a farmer's commodities are his bank account. So, you know. If you don't pay him, he's not going to give you his commodities. The off taker who is who are either for us, um, you know, exporters, food processing companies, or um traditional markets, their challenge is that they don't get the right quantity and the right quality. So our innovative micro and meter platform allows these three problems to be solved. So access to markets. Uh, logistics and supply chain efficiency and then production. So the markets, I don't know if you've heard, but the World Bank says that in the next six years, um, agriculture in Africa will be about a trillion dollar industry. And then in for those who have feature phones, you are talking about a twenty billion dollar um, market. So please just pull up the. Um, the pitch then for you so that I can finish it. Then you can ask me any question. So, like I said, for here, we build a micro and data platform which makes the USSD. So, if you dial star 800, star 008, hash, this is what's going to come up. Or we also partner with MTN where we are on their mobile money, um, USSD code. So, if you dial star 100, hash. Option five, option four, option three have go for me. Yeah. So especially the investments, um go for me. So like I mentioned, we do grains, typically rice, white maize, yellow maize, soybean, and cash currently. Um in terms of aggregation. So like I mentioned, every warehouse has the amount of money that's stationed on it. As a family, you can check these things before you motion to the warehouse. And this allows nationwide and also international food delivery. And this is actually a truck, a good for me truck. Um, over the past four years, we've done over a billion dollars in commodity trade. Um, we partnered 19,000 farmers. And farmers that work with us have about a 7% you know, profit margin on ordinary farmers. In addition to that, we have done about $152,000 in input financing. And so, okay, it was the wrong check for you. So, yeah, this is uh, so, 
people here. So like I was saying, hundred fifty thousand dollars in input financing directly, um, nineteen thousand farmers and seven percent much. How do we make money? So a lot of things I mentioned. There's a ten percent profit margin only. Yeah, uh, input financing, let you know, five to forty five percent profit margin on the commodity trade you make, depending on who we give them the commodities to. So like I said. Predominantly, these are exporters who have a better price. We have food processing companies, and then we have um, traditional markets like Madina and Mobushi. So, we've also introduced insurance or pharma financial services. And with pharma financial services, what happens is that we give farmers the opportunity to have insurance, have an existing insurance company. And also, we also have um, pharma safe investments also for them. And with those two make twenty percent profit margin. So that's how we make money. I'll go from you. Um, like I mentioned, there's a twenty billion dollar industry for those who have a feature phone, and we've incorporated in Nigeria, no operations yet, by the way, Kenya, Zimbabwe, um, and Burundi. Yes. So <clears throat> basically. That's what we think here, go for me. Uh, I think that's when you ask questions, I can probably elaborate better on what we here. Thank you so much. That we allow people to do crowdfunding and there's a potential of returns. So it's on our website, clearly that we don't guarantee returns because our regulator doesn't allow us to guarantee returns. Okay. So basically, it's that's how it is. It's a new... Um, crowdfunding regulation, which is regulated by the Security and Exchange Commission, which the Security and Exchange Commission used Go for Me as a sandbox. So our technology and our company has been used as a sandbox to build that regulation. And finally, what's in it? The ordinary public can anybody can just go to the platform, register, and ask that I'm into farming. Yes, I need this amount of money. Well, well how, how does it? It's a little bit. Um, um, there's a little bit more due diligence to get than that. So we have a due diligence process where a farmer will fill something like a Google form that has your name, your um location, you know, everything like your girlfriend's number and so on, so that we can find him <laughs> in case we need to. Um, and we typically, like I mentioned, deal with union societies and FPOs, which is more better for insurance. So... For now, we have a number of farmers who have, you know, reached out to us that they like to participate, but we've not yet begun working with individuals and also work with experienced smallholder farmers. So, minimum three cycles on a particular call. And the way we can determine, one of the ways we can determine that you've actually done that is if you belong to a union or cooperative that can fund for you. As well. mm-hmm. That's basically how the money works. Thank you. Yes, so now everybody can be a farmer. Whether you have the skills or not, you have the money. There are lands that you can invest in farm and grow for me. This is what they do. It was an impactful and insightful lesson. Thank you, Go For Me. I've learned a lot and I'm going to expand my business. And thank you, Yale, for this great opportunity. I am a leader, a great leader of Africa. And believe in me because I believe in Africa and you. See you at the top. Do well to subscribe. Don't forget to share and leave your comments at the comment section. Thank you.